The purpose of this video is to develop a template of sorts for the F test for the ratio of two variances. Uh, to give the test some context, we're going to look at some Nacogdoches real estate prices. These are some local real estate prices, price per square foot. Uh, we also have data on the rating, whether or not the exterior is brick, and the year of sale. Now suppose you wanted to test the hypothesis that the average price per square foot of real estate in the area is different for brick homes than it is for homes with a non-brick exterior. Um, in order to do that, you would first have to sort your data. So let's go ahead and do a sort. Let's select all of the observations and the titles. Click on the data tab and then sort. We'll sort by brick from largest to smallest values. Now I'm going to scroll through the data. There, there are a lot of observations and I'm going to look for the break that separates brick homes from non-brick homes. I'm going to right click here and throw in an insert. Now to do our test we would use the data analysis tool pack. There is a link appearing um, to show you how to add the data analysis tool pack if under your data tab you do not have this option here. There are two possible tests to try to establish whether or not there is a significant difference between two means. One is assuming equal variances and the other is assuming unequal variances. So there is an intermediate step and that is what we are developing here. So the first thing we need to do is to conduct the F test for two sample variances and we will see if the variance of price per square foot is different for brick homes than it is for non-brick homes. So we will go ahead and carry out that test. And I'll begin by first selecting the price per square foot of the brick homes as our first population and for the second population by hitting control down I'll go to that break and now I can select the price per square foot of non-brick homes and I haven't used any labels so we'll leave that off I'll use an alpha of 0.1 and new worksheet as the location for my output now here I get the output that comes from Excel and it is complete with an F test and a critical value as well as a p-value for the f-test but there are some issues so to deal with the issues I'm going to bring in this template that we're going to develop together and the first thing we're going to do is to highlight all of this output from the f-test and I will paste it in A1 control V so to highlight it I, I clicked and dragged over all the results and hit control Z and then I place my cursor in A1 and hit control V. Now this test is very different which is one of the reasons why it is less often used. To begin with uh, we have to have variable 1 and 2 in the correct order. Specifically we have to have it so that the larger of the two variances, the larger of the two sample variances is variable one. So right away you can see that we don't meet that requirement and so everything else down here is false. Well not the degrees of freedom uh, but the order of the degrees of freedom is false and that creates an issue. So our F test, our P value, and our F critical um, are all incorrect. So what I want to do to begin with is to build in a if function that will keep us honest in terms of putting the variable with the higher variance as variable 1. So I will just type in the requirement here equals if and the requirement is that variable 1 have the higher variance so if that is greater than this that's our logical test the value of true I'm putting a quotation here letting Excel know that I want a text response and if it's true a yes will do if that statement is not true then we want the response switch variables variable one must have the larger variance I 
I'll use a single quote here for variable one to isolate that. And uh, if you use a double quotation, it won't work. Excel treats that as an operator. Closing out with a double quote and hitting enter. And we can see we have a problem here. And this is intended to let us know that none of our calculations, which we'll do in a second, are valid, uh, but also that the, these results up here are not valid. So it's a signal for us to clear the form, actually, and go back and start the problem again. So we'll do that. Bringing back our data, we now know that we have to use the non-brick as our variable one. So hitting control down, we'll get to the non-brick values. And I'm highlighting all of the price per square foot results for non-brick homes. And then we'll go back to the top, control home, control shift down to highlight all the price per square foot results for the brick homes. And again, no, al no labels, alpha of 0 0.01, new worksheet, OK. And now let's grab these results here and put them into our template once again. Clicking on cell A1, hitting Control-V. And here we see we've got the correct response because the variance of variable 1 is higher than the variance of variable 2. Um, now, let's keep building out the template. Alpha. In order to get alpha, unfortunately, alpha is not reported in the results. But if we work from our critical value, we can get alpha uh, simply by using f equals f, f dot dist right tail. So f is a right tail distribution. And um, alpha is always going to be to the right of the critical region, uh, either alpha or alpha over 2, depending on the test. So if we're looking for alpha from a one-tail test, all we need to do is use the f.dist.rt for right tail. So selecting our data, if we use our critical value, that's the one that's defined by alpha, and put in our degrees of freedom, which are here in the df row for degrees of freedom. Um, the degree of freedom 1 will be for variable 1, and the degree of freedom 2 will be for variable 2, and hit enter. We will always get the same alpha that the test was defined by. And from there, um, we can get the two results that this, this canned Excel output does not create for us, which are the p-value for a two-tailed test. It's a simple calculation. Just take the p-value for a one-tailed test and multiply it by 2. And also the F critical for a two-tailed test, where we need to split alpha. Now to get this, we need to go from F dot inverse right tail. That is, we're going from probability to F. So that's the inverse part. And of course, the right tail, because F is a distribution that starts at 0. And so we're always concerned with the results on the far right side of the f distribution. We'll select this function, f.inverse.righttail. Our probability, instead of being alpha, will be uh, the result for alpha divided by 2. And this will allow us, in this case, to test the hypothesis that the population variance for variable 1 is not the same as the population variance for variable 2, which again will help us decide which of the two t-tests we're going to use. So now we need our degrees of freedom. Again, the df row will give us our degrees of freedom. They're simply n minus 1. And now um, the template is complete. We have a test to determine whether or not uh, we set things up properly when we use the data analysis tool pack. We have um, a recreation of the alpha that we used to create the test, and then that alpha is driving our critical value for a two-tailed test, that is the not equal to 
or equal to hypotheses. And our p-value for a two-tailed test is generated uh, from the test results and the degrees of freedom. So again, there's a clear form button. If you want to see how to add this, you can watch the video uh, whose link is appearing now. I would like to look at one more thing, going back to our original data. If you're proactive, you don't need to rely on the template to catch you. So what I'm going to do is to take this inserted row that helped us compute the test out, and I'm going to check the variances for the two populations before. So hypothetically, you could do this before you ran your test to know which is population one and which is population two. Just insert pivot table and we'll select our range including labels and then we'll put it in our on our existing sheet and we'll put it right up by the top here and say okay and now if we take brick as our row labels and then price per square foot over here and we're going to change the value field setting from sum to variance. And in closing on here, we can see that this will calculate the variance for our row labels. Now we can, we can fix the design of this pivot table using the pivot table tools design option in the tabs and then under report layout outline. And it'll tell us, okay, if brick equals zero, the variance is larger than if brick equals one. And then we would know from the onset to go ahead and make brick equals zero our population one. Anyway, um, this is how we go about building um, our template to be sure that when we run an F test for the ratio of two variances that we do so correctly and that we have our variables in the proper order. Um, thanks for watching and I hope that this helps.